welcome back to the green yard or what at this moment in time is not very green of a yard we're over in the garden area of the green yard and um, when I first started when we first moved into the house I first started doing this I really wanted this space to be a large market garden I wanted to utilize this whole area to really produce uh, some vegetables produce that food potentially sell at a farmers market or a local CSA it is a big property that we're at but it's really not that big so uh, I realized that that was probably something that was uh, un unachievable in this space and um, I scaled it back down to just a large garden this is a pretty large space over here now I did take up some of it for our irrigation pond um, I talked a little bit about that when we harvested our first uh, Barbie pink guavas. Um, you can look at that video as well. Um, I did take up about a row and a half when I created that irrigation pond, but the benefits I'm getting from the irrigation pond definitely outweigh any sort of negatives. Um, this space though is just not working for me. It's really not working. Um, it's overrun by grass the bermuda is just taking over and i really wanted to make it into uh, a garden with just a bunch of rows i thought that would be so awesome and i'll be able to grow so much more food but it's just not working so i'm tired of fighting with the bermuda i'm tired of doing this so what we're going to do is we're going to take out all the mulch that's here remove everything and we're going to start fresh and we're going to do some raised beds um raised beds are kind of the the in thing right now and there's a reason why uh they suppress a lot of weeds it's really difficult for bermuda other types of grasses to grow up into a raised bed depending on how you do it and uh ultimately it's kind of just easier to grow with that little uh you know soil microclimate that you create in that raised bed so we're gonna do a couple raised beds here. The overall vision for this space is actually to do uh, two raised beds, two or three raised beds, big, big raised beds, and then to actually do a small uh, caterpillar tunnel. So almost like a greenhouse that I can exchange for uh, plastic in the winter to increase that heat, grow some of our summer vegetables, and then in the summer I can go ahead and put on a uh, shade fabric a 30 or 50 percent shade fabric and grow uh, my winter vegetables in the summer that's the end of goal I don't know if it's gonna work or not but we'll see and I'm gonna take you along with me while we do that now um, this is gonna be a multiple part video I definitely will change clothes throughout the video because it's gonna be filmed over the next several months uh, but right now we're in the beginning of January uh, and I'm gonna hopefully put in the first raised bed but there's a lot of prep work we have to do before that happens so I'm gonna actually remove all of this mulch I've uh, raised up this area almost uh, two feet above where the rest of the ground is just with mulch so all I did was mulch two feet above where it's at right now still didn't suppress the Bermuda or those weeds like I wanted it to so we're gonna have to take out a bunch of this mulch to start off on the right foot with those raised beds but I have gone and uh, created one of our four, we're gonna do four total raised garden beds. This is one of four. This is the one we're gonna do right now. The other four will come here in a little bit. Um, I marked out the different spots on the ground where they're gonna be located with white spray paint, trying to just you know, familiarize myself with the space, really plan it out. So what this is made out of is uh, old, um, roof galvanized steel 
Uh, we used to have a, uh, a metal, this galvanized steel roof over uh, in our Arizona room. We did a remodel right when we moved in, which has changed that now. So these were leftover pieces, trying to reduce, recycle, reuse as much as possible uh, when it comes to this, help with more sustainability, help with that footprint, things of that nature as well. Um, so what I did is I cut uh, the four sides off of these uh, pieces. They were 13 foot uh, long pieces. I cut them, they're now six. It's a six by four. So six foot uh, long, four foot wide garden bed. And we're gonna do uh, one more over in this area and then on the other side uh, by our irrigation pond is where we'll do those other two. So once I cut the metal, I went ahead and I grabbed an old two by four. Once again, trying to uh, reduce, reuse. Uh, these two by fours are deteriorating, rotting anyways. They're gonna sit in, uh, you know, all of this mulch, all of this soil uh, and deteriorate, you know, break down as well. So what I'm gonna do is uh, once I get this settled, I plan it out because I'm a little impatient. I really wanna plant my vegetables. Uh, I'm actually gonna grab some metal brackets and bracket the sides here to make sure that uh, it doesn't end up uh, separating once the two by fours uh, break down. Um, so with this roofing, you'll notice that it has these big grooves here. So to make it kind of sealed on the sides, which actually it's it's pretty sealed on the sides. I'm actually, I'm gonna caulk here uh, in a little bit and make sure it is sealed um, on the upper part of the sides of the bottom. I'm gonna leave open so water can drain. Um, but what I did here is I actually met the different ridges so it's more of a sealed look. The problem though is it does give a separation of about four inches, three to four inches at the bottom. So just what I'm gonna do is these two end pieces are the longer pieces. When I get this in its spot, which is almost in its spot, I'm just gonna dig these sides down so that way it's sitting in the ground and it is a little bit better uh, position as well as it's level, because right now it's not level at all. So we're gonna go ahead and do that next. I am gonna put a, uh, I don't want to, but I'm going to, just because I know the weed pressure the Bermuda grass pressure here is really terrible. So I am gonna put down a synthetic weed fabric first. So I'm gonna put that down. I'm actually gonna do two layers of that. On top of that, I'm gonna layer old cardboard boxes. Once again, to kind of suppress those weeds, hopefully kill out those weeds. Um, and then we're gonna practice a little bit of hugel culture, um, which if you don't know what that is, it is a uh, method of planting mainly trees, but we're gonna do it in a raised bed as well, uh, where you put in large uh, stumps, sticks, all those kinds of larger wood pieces at the bottom, and then you can layer it like a lasagna, do leaves, mulch, all kinds of different layers. And then at the very top is where we would do our garden soil, amend it with compost, uh, manure, things of that nature to help balance out that nitrogen that might be uh, removed from the decomposition of those wood logs. Um, you know me, I, I do a lot of mulching. So hookah culture is new to me, but I'm not opposed to the concept. I love mulching, I've seen great results with it. So I know that hookah culture will end up being really good for me as well. Um, the other part with that is it does reduce that cost a little bit because I'm not having to fill up this giant raised garden bed with uh, nothing but soil. This would cost uh, hundreds of dollars to fill up with uh, planting soil. So um, let's go ahead. I'm going to level out this spot a little bit for where everything is situated. And then we're going to get down to that uh, frost fabric and start with those. Uh, I'm sorry, frost fabric. We're going to get down that. Uh, weed fabric and start with our cardboard boxes, logs, mulch, leaves, uh, and then of course our, our garden soil that we have here as well.
dug out the sides. Um, it's pretty level now. I'm actually going to go get a level and see how level it is uh, because it's going to be here. I'm not going to move it again. So I want to make sure it's pretty level here. Uh, the weed pressure is actually a lot worse than I thought it was. Um, I, I it felt like I was digging in our in our lawn. So there are a lot of roots in there, a lot of uh, issues that need to come out, uh, a lot of weeds that need to come out. So definitely going to put down heavy weed fabric uh, because I don't want any weeds to come in here. Once they infiltrate a raised bed, I got to take everything out, do it all over again. And I don't really want to do that for a second time. So I'm going to go grab the, the level. I'm going to go grab the weed fabric and start uh, putting it down here. But first I got to move this out of the way. down uh, gonna go ahead and slowly and carefully move our raised bed back on into its position uh, trying not to pull up any of this uh, weed fabric as we go I held it down with bricks on the side give you a little bit of the uh, nesting at the end so Hopefully not though, I think this is gonna provide me exactly what I need. So, now comes kind of the fun part. Um, when we moved into this house, the previous owner left a huge, giant pile of old chopped up wood. So, I actually get to finally use some of that wood. I've used it a little bit for firewood, but I get to finally use it, put it in here. Uh, I'm honestly gonna go about a foot, maybe a little bit higher with just old stumps and logs. So uh, let's go ahead and start grabbing some stumps and logs. did a layer of cardboard um, just basically I, I save all our old boxes any boxes that we get I save them so that way I can do this I've had success in the past with putting those boxes out I've also not had success so it just kind of depends I think the combination of that uh, weed fabric the cardboard boxes and then of course the you know two feet of uh, wood, wood chips, everything else will, will suppress those, uh, those grasses and those weeds like I want them to. So um, now I'm going to go and start grabbing the, the wood, those piles of wood, and start putting them into the uh, raised bed.
lot of uh, recycled materials. You know, we have this, like I mentioned before, uh, this uh, galvanized steel roof that we cut into these different pieces. I went ahead and drilled it into some reused two by fours to help secure it to the sides. Uh, I will eventually have to buy some metal brackets to put on the side uh, just to secure it in into its space. But for now, uh, it's very secure, very solid. Um, at the bottom, I went in and I put in some uh, old logs. Um, it's actually about out of this uh, three foot high section, about two feet of it is just old logs. So I put in a whole bunch of old logs in here. Um, after that, I did about six inches of mulch. So I went ahead and just layered a whole bunch of mulch on it. Um, then I did uh, a layer of leaves, all different types of leaves. Uh, a little bit more mulch just to kind of secure those leaves down and then last but not least I have our garden soil this is actually probably about four inches of garden soil and you'll notice on the sides I actually did it above um, the two sides over here is actually shorter I tried to keep it up to the top over here because I know over time as everything decomposes it is going to shrink down and I'm gonna have to add more soil more compost into our uh, raised garden bed here so um, now comes the fun part, what I've been waiting for, which is actually getting to plant out this raised bed. We're in January right now, so most of our cold season crops uh, are, are in. Um, I like to densely plant my, my crops. I found that that added biodiversity actually cuts down on a lot of pest problems that I used to have when I didn't do this before. Um, but what I'm thinking is doing a um, kind of a, a row of peas in the middle. I just love snap peas, so uh, I really like to, to plant out peas. Uh, maybe even doing some, some chicken wire, a little um, uh, kind of chicken wire in the middle here plant on both sides peas. Uh, the nice thing with carrots and peas is that the carrots grow down and the peas grow up so you can plant them really close together uh, a couple inches away from each other. So alongside my peas I'm going to do carrots um, and then I have to see what I have. I think I have both broccoli and cauliflower. They do better as transplants but I'm just not in a position right now to, to do a transplant. So I am going to plant those seeds see if they come up. We've been warm enough now where germination is still possible. So I'm thinking about doing uh, a row of, of like broccoli and cauliflower, some of our brassicas, and then along the outside doing lettuce um, along the outside. That should give everything enough space uh, where I can have a whole bunch of food just from this one garden bed. So I'm going to try it out. I'm going to see what happens. Uh, you know, I've in the past... Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, you know, I, I've just been fighting weeds this whole time. So I've never really seen my vegetables at this property go and, and the green yard go through to to fruiting to, to fruition here. So I think if I give my, my uh, brassicas uh, a big enough space and plant the lettuce on the outside that I can actually make a really productive raised bed garden here.
gonna add a layer of mulch on the top, but after watering in the soil that I bought, it actually looks like it's pretty uh, organic material heavy. It has a lot of uh, wood chips already in it. So I think it's gonna retain this moisture pretty well. Um, what I'll do is once we start um, mowing and everything again, I'll actually probably take uh, some of our dry grass clippings uh, and put it over top. Uh, most of the yard doesn't have Bermuda in it. It's only this part that uh, really has that Bermuda taking over. So probably dry some of those grass clippings uh, and, and layer it on top. I've had great success breaking down uh, that material with, uh, with earthworms, things like that. Um, at some point in time, we'll definitely have to add worms to this raised bed as well. Other beneficial insects, because right now there's nothing in here, unless there's some uh, worm eggs in this soil, which there might be. So I went ahead and watered. Um, the next step will be once things sprout, I'll go ahead and uh, put in my trellis for my peas and then of course install that uh, soaker hose in here as well so I don't have to hand water once we have those delicate leaves out. But there we go, brand new raised bed garden here in the green yard. I'm so excited for these veggies to grow, to start harvesting from this raised bed. I think it's gonna be full of abundance. And uh, maybe by the time this episode comes out as well, we'll have a little bit of sprouts. We'll see uh, if we can do an update here uh, as the spring wears on in maybe March or April as we start to really harvest out of this garden. So as always, live green, plant lots just like this, and of course, have fun. We'll see you next time.